Hello everyone, welcome to From the Void Podcast, a show all about Eternal and our experiences with the game. I'm Navalis, one of your hosts. With me, as always, is Bassoon. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. I just hit Master yesterday, so now I can um, pretend like I'm going to get top 100 for the next week, and then when I'm ranked 500, meme for the rest of the month. You can do it. <laughs> I, th- I think... I, I th- I've said it before, but I think I can sustain the focus and level of play it takes to be a top 100 eternal player for any five minute period of time but then sustaining that over literally a month is maybe outside of the realm of my abilities you're definitely not alone and we have, <laughs> and we have a special guest you've heard his voice already that is Grimfan. Grimfan, how are you sir I'm doing good. I uh, I got prescribed Adderall yesterday, so I'm feeling really uh, on top of things. That's for sure. Very. Well, that's good. It's helping your focus. It's helping you. Uh, it's giving you some clarity in your in your oh, direction. Yeah. And and yesterday's stream was quite uh, quite a thing. Anybody anybody who missed Grimfan's stream yesterday, go find his review of all 200 draft and ranked players. Uh, he I goes didn't through go over draft. I did do every person that I knew in ranked, and then the draft people that I knew because they're all actually only at the time 50 draft math. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Uh, okay, it's a very good stream. Go at uh, twitch.tv slash Grimfan. Check out that VOD though. It's a, it's a very good stream. I actually didn't know you checked that out. So, uh, I was I was there for a lot of it. I was in and out. I was working. Oh, okay. Uh, I saw I saw enough that, to know it was good content. That must have, must have been really uh, pleasing for your ears. I know that uh, <laughs> you just like to leave me on and listen to me while you drive. So, that grim ASMR. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. What? You doing okay now? Listen over there. You look disconcerted. You look sad. Uh, you look I, I am. I am been under the weather for this past week. So if I if I'm a little out of it, I apologize, everyone. But we're gonna get through this. We will. We will. I will make it through. I got Basum with me. A Grim fan. So it's gonna be a great show. So Basum, tell us about yourself. How did you get into Eternal? How did you hear about it? You know, we talk. We ask our guests this every week as Eternal's a as a newer CCG out there on the market. Uh, when did you start playing? Hang on, hang on, hang yes, on, hang yes. on. I'm going to start. This is, yeah. I feel like over the last few episodes, let me get my sleeves up, let me roll my shoulders oh, out. Oh, we right. haven't been appropriately setting up our guests. we got to fluff them up before they talk about themselves right, so the audience ahead. knows the credentials of the person we're talking about. Grim Fan is the original OG. I don't know if you invented the deck, but you definitely perfected the art of the Chorge Rad. Fire, yeah. time, justice, charge run. Did you invent that deck? Uh, so there was a uh, very um, a very chill streamer. His name was Lamelli, and he took uh, ideas from his chat about decks. And at the time, uh, Instructor's Baton is what uh, Divining Rod was called. <laughs> was a little che- a little cheaper and a little bit better, and so people were like, "Oh, you should make a uh, charge a charge rod deck with it." Like you, you know, instead of everybody doing flying, let's try charge. But there weren't enough charge creatures in the game yet, and so he just made this really bad deck, and it was the worst thing I'd ever seen. But <laughs> it had a little bit of potential, and I knew that when uh, when more cards came out, that I, it was something I would want to revisit. So technically, I think the community created it at some point. Oh. But I, but I wanted to revisit it, and it was. It turned out to be pretty good, actually. Okay, so I like it. You did not. This is perfect in theme with your uh, championing as a man of the people. You took the people's deck and you leaned into it for literally a year. Played almost exclusively charge rod. You were the charge rod master god, and then yeah. proving that you were not a one trick pony. Since then, you have won an ETS with Combray. You have top cut two Direwolf Digital tournaments. One to be concluded in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and you have become a partner t- Twitch streamer, and you have played Yetis in top five masters. I did. Welcome to the show, Grim Fan. Yes, the, the best thing about that is him playing Yetis in the top five of masters. So that's like, let's be yeah. honest here. That, that's the best part right there. Let's toss those other accolades out the window. Yetis, <laughs> Yetis is the most you cast, important. 
<laughs> you cast a Thud Rock at rank two masters. I did, yeah. Well, Thud Rock <laughs> is a solid card, to be honest with you. Thud Rock uh, is I sick. Don't, I don't think... Yeah, there's nothing wrong. We Okay, so we will get into that at a later portion of the show. Grim fan, for now, tell us about your journey with Eternal. Tell us about your history with the game and with streaming. Yeah, sure. So uh, I heard about Eternal through a uh, stream that featured uh, LSV talking about some a project that he was working on. And I think I saw some video of, uh, like... Richard Garfield or somebody playing the game and on a tablet like it was weird but like I just remember that he talked about the 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 game coming up and then I heard about all of the magic pros that I had followed um play, like de developing this game and I was like well I have to get in on this so I was probably in the second wave of beta invites like closed beta invites um I I think it was sometime in April there maybe uh, had been some people who got in about a week earlier than me. And so uh, I've been playing since then. And um, I was not the friendliest person in closed beta, I would say, because there were a lot of people already trying to produce content. And I was like, this is crazy. This is in closed beta. We have like 100 people playing this thing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but like, but like people like RNG and Neon, and there's a guy at the time named Babam. Like they were all trying to create content for this game. And we were all like, we were all trying to scramble for what was the best thing. And we were like, Akaria Blue was this new crazy concept. And, you know, like madness you could like madness and unstable form things and keep the creature like it was a it was a wild time crazy shit i've um, heard i've heard so. about the madness unstable form combo that sounds incredibly yeah. frustrating and, and oh, madness wow. cost two it was it was <laughs> oh like you word. could do that for three yeah disgusting yeah. oh and then gross <laughs> so so yeah that's that's when i started playing what were the other questions uh okay so then so you're in close beta you're enjoying the game how did yep. we get from a man, a hobbyist, a mid-level Magic the Gathering player to the, the the legend we have before us, the yeah. Eternal Titans uh, God Among Men? Well, do you want to know about like the competitive play or like the streaming aspect or what do you, what, what do you exactly want to know <laughs> about? I want to know what you're wearing on your head right now. Okay. Oh no, he's getting. He's getting <laughs> I can't get the headset back on. This is not working. This is this is part of the bit. So I, I thought we were going to go with the notes, and I was going to talk about how I got into streaming. But uh, I knew that Eternal was going to be a good game because even though it didn't have art at the time and the animation sucked, it was a lot of fun to play. Okay. Closed beta, like I said, closed beta is wild. Like there was barely any art. All the art that we did have kind of sucked. And this is a this is a fish hat, so this is a little a little a little fish up. I know it's kind of hard to see. Yeah. <laughs> For the but, audio only listeners, Grimfan is wearing a red trucker hat with what looks like jaws coming out the top of it. Yeah, it's a yeah. little it's bass. Like, it's yeah, it's a bass. Yeah. Okay, imagine a unicorn horn, but bass. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Is this better? Is this a good angle for it? It's yeah. beautiful. It's be everything okay. is. So oh, anyway. it has a tail coming out the other side. Yeah, yeah, oh, wow. yeah. It has a tail. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> okay, can so you do me a favor, Grim fan? Actually, could you actually yeah, turn the hat sideways for a second for me? Yeah, I could do that for you. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> baby, it's so <laughs> yeah. good. I'll just leave it there. Just <laughs> oh my for god! Oh, yeah. In fact, this is going to wow. be today's stream outfit. I think I think it'll work out really well. <laughs> yes, I love it. So, um. So yes, yeah, so we started. At, I you know I really liked Eternal a lot. I wasn't trying to be super competitive at first, but I was kind of getting burned out on Magic, and I was in the closed beta and breaking the NDA a thousand times because I was showing all my friends at the card shop this <laughs> game is absolutely sick. You're gonna love it, and everybody was like, I don't know why you like this shit. I, this looks boring, you know, because uh, they were all really getting into Hearthstone. They were Magic players, but they were really getting into Hearthstone, and uh, I found it a lot more enjoyable than Hearthstone as well. So. But anyway, that's that's what kind of hooked me on Eternal. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. And you you do have a question about how did I get into streaming? But do, do you want to go over there? Go in there. Go in go, there. Go it's on. all it's all part okay. of one yes. beautiful journey. I'm I'm trying to do your jobs for you, but I feel like I'm not getting directed. Very I think well I think you're this. misunderstanding the... what the show notes represent. Okay. They they, yeah, <laughs> they exist for me to ignore. And okay. then when we get too far off track, I can reference them and maybe rein us back in 
the gotcha. tiniest e- bit. Exactly. They're, <laughs> gotcha. they're, they're for me to, like... I feel like, you know, I'm a referee in boxing. When it gets, like, too many blows start raining down, I feel like, all right, all right, hang on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So uh, I actually wanted to be a streamer back when uh, the original Dark Souls came out. Um, I was playing it, and there, there were dog enemies in Dark Souls, and uh, they would attack your character. And I was having so much fun, like, screaming and running away from those dog enemies while playing <laughs> on the couch with my uh, family and I was uh, talking about getting uh, furked in the derg, but I was saying it in such a way that I was like, I, like, like the, the things that were coming out of my mouth were just crazy. And you know, I was like, this is good content. This would be great. What if I made a Larry, the cable guy or Twitch <laughs> that plays n- exclusively dark souls style games, like Bloodborne, dark souls, dark souls Two, And he's just like the full get up, completely country you know i'm from texas so i could do the axiom if i need to and it would have been perfect uh but i was too shy to do it and i didn't think that you know people would like some fat guy streaming dark souls and you know cussing at his computer when i think actually i'd probably be a twitch millionaire right now (laughs) went forward and done this idea but uh eternal kind of put me into a perspective where i felt like i was actually ahead of the curve and um i started streaming eternal right as soon as they lifted the uh, nda in october and i was actually probably maybe the fir- first or second person to hit the twitch page uh when they when they opened oh up. wow nice well i had an advantage i could stream from work so mm. how what is your work oh, oh, hang on yes I, tell us i was work i was working at a computer lab at the time uh as a computer lab assistant which is basically uh you just sit in a chair and you oversee a computer lab and you just like, if anybody has questions, they can come up and ask you if they need any help with like a word processing programs or like any of the office suite programs, that kind of thing. Uh, if you need like an inspiring idea for a paper, you know, like oh, topic wow. idea, that kind of thing, they can come up and talk to you about stuff. Uh, nobody ever actually came up and talked to me about their papers, unfortunately, because <laughs> I do have a, I do have a bachelor's in creative writing, so I was like, you know, I was waiting for that person, but they just oh. never came. Doesn't it feel anyway. so terrible to be an unused tool? In, uh, nah, I <laughs> use it. Anyway, so uh, I talked to my boss, and uh, she was actually okay with me just streaming from uh, from the computer lab. I had good internet, and uh, most of the time, like, my downtime is probably seven out of the eight hours in the day and uh, I could just do whatever I wanted, but I could not uh, use voice because I was not uh, supposed to distract or cause any sort of noise in the computer lab, basically. Right. So Uh. that that led me to having to use uh, text to speech for all of my communication with my viewers. (laughs) (laughs) That actually sounds like an incredible bit. Wow. It was pretty. It was pretty okay. The problem is that uh, there were these other talented streamers coming up, uh, like uh, Sir Rhino, Trudon, and um, and just, like just other people who could actually use their voices and use their personality. And I was getting absolutely crushed by them. Like I could, I could hold down like forty people, which is okay. I mean, that's you know, that's basically an average bassoon buffoon stream. But the problem is oh. that I couldn't actually get above that. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just <laughs> Are you kidding me? God, I'm with a legend in here. But anyway, I, it was it was very unsuccessful. Even though I was putting a lot of effort into it, I had a chat bot or I had a draft bot that could actually read chat, and then it was a Python bot that would uh, move my cursor for me and pick cards that the chat had uh, had picked. So that's actually crazy. It, yeah, and I still have that. I just don't use it anymore. Even though I'm probably going to uh, get back to that at some point. Hmm. Okay, so that's a that's a long thing on on streaming. But no, that's no, that's, no that, that's awesome to hear about. It's very unique how you kind of got into it and how your work kind of let, like let you do that. It's pretty sweet. So thanks for sharing. Yeah, that. but I found that job yeah. really unfulfilling, so I basically had to leave it because, like, even though I was streaming and I was digging it, I wasn't my stream wasn't actually taking off because of the no voice thing. Oh, for sure. And for I sure. Did, didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't feel like streaming when I came home from work because I'd been streaming all day, you know, and then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So totally understand, like, you know, not interacting on that level is, is difficult and can make it boring for you in some sense, you know, because you want to interact, you want to yeah. talk and totally, totally get that. Anything, anything you want to add to soon before we move No, on? but I think it's important to know that since then, 
Grimfan has has uh, has a wildly successful stream and has been a very com competitive and successful um, Eternal player. Um, recently partnered. I'm very excited about the growth of his stream and his ability to pursue his uh, his passion. So um, everybody, go follow and like and send him currency. For sure, for sure. Uh, like I said, I joined it. I've been in the stream a couple times and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So definitely go check out Grim Fan Street. And we'll uh, we'll do more of that where they can find you and everything a little bit later on. All right, let's move into the news before we move into our topic this week. We had this week the test break, oh, well, the test uh, envoys, and um, well, uh, how did that go? Tell us, Basun. How did how did that go? How did that whole test thing this weekend? Griffin, oh man, yeah. yeah. Tell us about that. I mean, nothing happened. Oh, no, I mean, no, this was... is nothing about me. This is totally about Bassoon, the almost won a tournament that he did not qualify. Bassoon, <laughs> this is like, <laughs> this is oh like... my god, yeah, they pulled you up from the bottom 64 and they just put you right in the sights. They were like, We're gonna do this. <laughs> I actually did not even finish my placement games, I stopped playing when I hit 11 losses, and <laughs> nice. so I. <laughs> I was just like, all right, whatever. And then that, su that Sunday morning, I got a message from a teammate that says like, hey, there's something weird going on with the bracket. You're in it. Load up your game and tell us what happens. And so and I, hear, I, I heard what happened was wild, right? Like it was just a crazy ride for you. <laughs> yes. So, it so auto picked your deck. Well, you, you tell the story. Go, go, go. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, so I, I like, I'm, just, I'm washing dishes and like making lunch. And I like drop everything and run to my computer and just load up the game. And I'm already like two turns into the tournament game, and it had auto selected uh, my like memeiest Yeti's deck. And <laughs> and then I loaded the game, and just like my opponent's portrait just like exploded, and I won, and I was in round two. Um, and oh, so then I take that opportunity to campaign online for me to be awarded the uh, eternal champion of all time and no one no yeah. one bit so so the interesting thing is i heard people that lost in that tournament actually got packs so how do you feel about not getting anything <laughs> i feel kind of bamboozled negative i've been value. swindled yeah 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 negative value although i do believe the 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 uh, the social cachet I gained from being the people's meme champion for that, like, hour or whatever was worth the 15 packs or whatever. I couldn't figure out if I should root for you or Lord of Slam. I mean, Lord of Slam is my 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 number one fan, but I, I'm probably maybe your number 15 fan or so. So I, I was kind of <laughs> tough. I think I think if Lord of Slam and I are meeting in the finals, I insta concede and just okay, say perfect. like you yeah. got it, Dad. Because I did promise him that if I if he won that tournament, I would change my name to Slam Fan. I would no longer be Grim <laughs> Fan. It would be Slam Fan. It would be the equivalent of getting somebody t tattooed on your. I would do it for him, but uh, unfortunately, <laughs> okay. and this is actually my biggest disappointment with that tournament. They did not let that tournament continue, and I, I think that they should have actually just let that tournament finish. The 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 meme the meme bracket finishing would have been like that would have made me respect the Direwolf Digital Eternal yeah. team way way more than it's them canceling. Kind of. Like the the whole yeah. my my one of my problems with that was the whole t thing felt like a panic. Like uh oh, this isn't working. Let's shut the whole thing down. Let's make a whole new thing that doesn't work. Let's make people sit around for two hours while we wait for to see whether or not it could possibly work. And, and honestly. I think that really they, they just needed to not panic and they needed to kind of just roll with things if they could like yeah exactly exactly so sure. so we we memed about it but um can 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 somebody give us a quick rundown of what actually happened for the people not in the know it was sort of uh because i was gone this weekend so from what i've been just following this on twitter so like with people tweeting out and everything it's like the whole bracket uh, thing got mixed up for the top 64. There was like, like bassoon, you were in it, and um, there yeah, was yeah, like, a bunch of people were in it. Yeah, Basically, it yeah. just populated the top 64 bracket with random people. <laughs> I, can, yes. I can talk about it a little bit from somebody who, uh, from the perspective of somebody who qualified. Real so, we were actually a lot, several people on my team qualified for the tournament. We were all discussing what we were going to play, and it all mattered on like where we actually placed because if you went into to see who was in the top 64 
in the first event, it actually said, see the bracket. And then in the second event, it said bracket, uh, no matches found or not populated yet or something like mm -hmm. that. So nobody could see who they were playing or where they came in, like ranked. So we had no idea if if like the seed mattered to be on the play or the draw. And we actually did not get the bracket until like right when the tournament started. So nobody knew what was going to be happening uh, until until exactly when the tournament was supposed to start. And then everybody knew something was wrong because none of the names that were on there were correct, like at all. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it was pretty crazy. And and then, um, then what happened was they decided to go on ahead and close that tournament down and make a new event on the fly and try to manually uh, pair people into this event and that kind of worked, but not really, because the way that they decided to do it is you'd have to uh, close your game, log back into your game, select the event, and join it for free. So they didn't actually automatically put you into the event, that you actually had to manually join it yourself. And unless you were paying attention to Twitter or Reddit or whatever, you actually had no idea that this was even a possibility. So like, they didn't send out an in-client message or anything like that, which I think would have probably been the best way to do it. Because they have they have the technology to do it, they just probably didn't want to upset the people who don't care about the tournament. But I think that they yeah. probably should have just done it if they cared about all the people that were waiting getting back into the tournament. Yeah. So then what happened was they tried to run it with uh, like six or, or it may have been ten people that were basically just uh, labeled as Seraph underscore number as the buy. <laughs> And so there were multiple people that in this tournament that were going to have like three buys up to the top 16, which is like crazy wow. when you think yeah. about it. And uh, and so that that was already kind of like upsetting some people. And I, I brought a super wonderful spicy deck to that tournament, but I didn't get a chance to play it for more than one round because I did beat my opponent. But uh, but then in the second round, we waited around for... I. I well okay so there were a couple things that happened. One of the tournament matches was the memeiest thing ever. It was a knucklebones deck with cookbook versus the most greedy mid-range. You would have loved it, BB. It was like a cleaver, uh, Azendel, um, Cerso, Vara deck that was like running. Oh my big, god! Yeah, it was what? like the biggest top end Zenon, uh, like cleaver deck that you could ever imagine and uh <laughs> that deck had no chance against the knuckle bones deck because it just gets like harsh rule them like eight times and you know draw a million <laughs> cards so but that match wow. lasted the entire it was like an hour of just that match <laughs> and then it, it was a great stream content for them because they were like please keep it going we need we're trying to figure this shit out you just need it <laughs> as long as you can i'm pretty sure they had a direct line to uh, connor i think his name was connor Oh, and wow. anyway, uh, so we, then we waited about another 15 to 20 minutes after that match. And then finally they decided to tell us, hey, we have to shut this thing down. We can't actually continue because of some technical issues. So and from start to end, this whole process took maybe like four hours, right? Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. It was a big waste of time. And I know that a lot of people were very upset about it. I personally thought it was hilarious, but I thought it could have been more funny. And it could have definitely been more interesting, uh, but I think that they were panicking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th so that's yeah. kind of a bummer. They are kind somewhat rectifying the situation with a um, a makeup this weekend, right? Yes, but because of the Pro Magic Pro Tour is going on, it will not be live streamed. And right now, the only real reason for somebody who uh, is a tournament goer, like somebody who wants to be a tournament like champion or whatever is to play in these things is that exposure and those streams and having your heroes kind of talk about you. I mean, the practice is fine, but I can, I can guarantee you that the people that qualified on, you know, TRS, SBG, ET, yeah. like we're, we're, we've lost a lot because a hundred packs is nothing really. Yeah. Uh, and the exposure and, and the stream being gone is basically just uh, makes it kind of worthless. But I do like how they are giving people, where the packs do mean something, uh, 15 packs, five from each, uh, like three different sets, which is really cool because that that's neat that they varied that up. And the premium uh, into the story is obviously sick. I like that. Very nice. That's rad. Yeah, yeah. Even... They were on point with their premium games. Uh, the premium overheat to talk about how the uh, the turn <laughs> system kind of crashed was really great. And 
I think that's all LSV though. I mean, he is the Lord of Puns. So yeah, yeah. yeah that's I, people who are mad on Reddit about it being an overheat, like ugh, common, have no sense of humor and need to. Yeah, check what themselves. the hell is that? You should you, you <laughs> they should get nothing. They should get. <laughs> I don't know. They should get a premium. Uh, nothing. They should get a premium nothing. That is what they <laughs> A premium nothing. A brand new promo comes out for people who complain. All right, there we go. Uh, yeah. Let's move on here. Uh, we have the ETS that also happened this past weekend. Uh, anything that stands out um, from you from the the uh, Eternal you know tournament series that uh, RNG Eternal does? It, w- it was a very interesting top eight. And so if you, is there any decks you just want to highlight or just talk about just for a second before we go into... Our topic of the week. Uh, Alessi's still a good card. Um, if you are in a deck that has both justice and time in it, put Alessi in your deck and oh, win tournaments. Oh, it's not that good, but it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, Did after... You think... Go ahead. Go ahead, Griffin. Oh, I was going to say that that uh, I don't know if the Dark Alessi deck is the best representation of Alessi, but I think that it's, uh, it definitely is a it plays a good role in that deck. It, it, and um, Combre Agro that Sunny made recently had featured Alessi, which I thought was very interesting. Because mm-hmm. uh, even though you don't have that many spells, just her ability to gain some life and grow in the early game can kind of offset the screen matchup a little for you. So I think it's pretty sweet there. Yeah, for sure. I, um, I, well, the I, only other thing that I want to touch on from this tournament is Kamado entered a deck that tries to curve Argentport Instigator into Vadius, and he's insane, is all I have to say yeah, about go, that. What go a, on eternalwarcry.com, a... check that out. <laughs> Just to let you know, like, anytime like, I play like Saturday evening, I have to look at this to see what the top eight is, because I know I'm going to face the first place deck at least five times in a row uh, on the ladder. <laughs> and, that, and that's what happened. I, yeah. The first five games I play Saturday night... Was Dark Alessi, Dark Alessi, Dark Alessi, Dark Alessi, Dark Alessi. I'm like, all right. I, I just kind of shut it down after that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait for the people get this through their system and kind of go back to more <laughs> of a meta type thing. Anyway, so that's what happens I will there. Say, though, mm-hmm. I will say, though, that Aether Lama is definitely on fire. He's doing really, oh, really sure. well. Um, yeah, I, I was very impressed with his play in the... Uh, I think it, maybe it was the first uh, test tournament. I, like he was, I think he was playing Valkyries, or maybe this was an ETS. But anyway, he's always been very impressive on uh, on stream when I've seen him. Uh, obviously, Mushin Kamado or whatever, but almost <laughs> is also uh, doing really well this season in the ETS, and he, he very impressive that how he's taking um, some very interesting decks and doing well with them. Especially putting Night Maw in your market of a film deck was really cool. I thought that was a uh, a very interesting. Uh, piece of tech and it actually might be better than it looks even though it looks kind of crazy uh sometimes those film decks have a lot of trouble getting through against combray decks and yeah all of a sudden going merchant drop night mall all of your stuff's unblockable that could just be the end of the game so i actually think that's some really great tech from him and uh, i think that we're going to i think honestly we're going to see almost keep doing these really like awesome decks and uh nothing against tgp the great parliament but i really think that uh i i I don't know. I, I don't know who else is on the Great Parliament, but I kind of wish that almost was on maybe a slightly more competitive team because I really do feel like his deck building has been on point lately. Great Parliament has some good players. They've got Je- Jez like is like uh, has broken the meta a few times. That's um, true. Yeah, the Rock consistently top eights. Yeah, yeah, the Rock is good too. I, I guess I guess I don't know. It's, it feels like they're a team that has some good players, but maybe not the support structure to make them like one of the top teams, if that makes sense. And For it sure. just I. I for sure, for sure. Uh, let, let's let's move into this real quick before we go into our topic. Um, there is an article that Team Rankstar does called Meta Monday in uh, TC Chamber 5. Uh, he wrote it, and he talked about how Shadow is pretty good. And if we look at the ETS, every deck in the top eight has Shadow in it. If you notice that, every single deck. And this is the question I want to bring up to you, uh, Bassoon, especially to you, Grimfan, because you you stream, you both stream a lot, so you both you know obviously play a lot. You both do tournaments. Is Shadow too good? Does 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 it need to be balanced no. just a little bit, or are are you fine with it? No, well, I mean, if we had this conversation literally one month ago, you would be laughed out of the room. Shadow's not too good. That's yeah. Var is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, like the the what the reason why Shadow got a lot better is that first of all, people started taking the screen deck seriously, and that's a big deal. 
uh, because the cookbook came out and the Cauldron cookbook basically pushed the Scream Deck from being pretty good to amazing because you really can't sit around and cookbook against the Scream Deck. They will kill you so fast it's not even funny. And so because of how good cookbook is, that made the Scream Deck a whole bunch better. Uh, and that pushes Shadow in that area. So Haunting Scream got much better, which is nice. Uh, but Vara, obviously, is the big reason why Shadow is taken off. And uh, as we know, you really can't, um, you really cannot change uh, campaign cards. It's been one of those things where if a card comes out in a campaign, they really don't want to do any sort of balance patches. And that's okay because the campaigns are such small uh there's such a small amount of cards that when set five comes out for instance we may see that vara has something that counters her better or we may see that other factions get more support and maybe cookbook is kind of bad now or maybe to leader combo is destroyed because they print a really good creature that says you can't play more than one creature a turn you know that kind of thing and we see that the you know these things are adjusted so I think the shadow is in a great spot. I, I actually do love how Eternal goes from uh, Combray being the best deck to Shadow decks being the best deck to Rakano being the best deck, and we have these huge shifts of different play styles that get their time in the light. And right now it's Shadow, which is fine. I think that's great. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, and as soon as as soon as like there's a an aggro deck that is. Uh, um, widely playable <laughs> um cookbook is a laughable card right you can't do yeah. nothing on two and then do nothing on three and, and put exist. something that will kill you into your deck eventually. <laughs> like the yeah. thing is like if once you stabilize against the aggro deck and you're at like five you're basically dead with a cookbook if you've been drawing a card like a, if you've drawn in my experience, if you've drawn a single card with that card <laughs> against an aggro deck, you will die the next, like, the at the turn after you stabilize. You are basically dead, so. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I yeah. have a little experience with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, Shadow's not too good. Uh, the, the, everything will settle down soon, and uh, yeah. everybody just needs to, to calm down. For sure. All right, let's move on to the, one of the main topic. We have... The streamer cuddle dad rankings <laughs> by Grim Fan. All right, I, I'm gonna throw oh, yeah. this up here. Hey, please, uh, please explain this, Grim Fan, as I pull this up. So go ahead. <laughs> you hear the way he says that, Grim Fan? Explain yourself. <laughs> okay, so a couple nights ago, a couple nights ago, uh, oh god, I'm editing the no. <laughs> I'm, uh, this is the problem with Tilda. I'm like editing things while I'm trying to talk. Okay, so a couple of nights ago, I was about to go to bed and I had a pretty long stream because my goal was to host Innkeeper at the end of the day because I think he's a very talented streamer that does not get enough, uh, definitely does not get enough exposure because of the time that he streams because there's really nobody that uh, is on around that time that wants to host Innkeeper for some reason. I don't know what, what the deal is exactly, but he streams late. He only streams for a few hours. It's kind of hard to catch him. And um, and so I had a long day, and I was about to go to bed, and I was like, you know what? You know, because I you know, here's a little personal info about me. I cuddle my significant other every night. We always, we always have a cuddle session. That's just one of the things great about our relationship. We actually sleep in different beds because, uh, like, they're they're next to each other, but we each have a queen size bed because I'm such a light sleeper. But we always oh. start the night off with a cuddle. So anyway, the, the I love Lucy method. Yeah, I love. Uh, so I love cuddling. I would say that I'm a cuddle connoisseur. Maybe even, <laughs> uh, maybe even just like a, maybe I could be a cuddle master. Who knows? But I will say that uh, I had just gotten done watching Major Laser stream, and I was like, that is one heck of cuddly guy. I bet you. He gives you some great cuddles at night. And that was my thought right before going to bed. And then we, I had another thought. How would I rate people on how good they are at cuddling? So I decided to uh, have, I believe it looks like there are six different factors. Uh, the fun factor is basically how fun I think that person would be if I were to be cuddling them. Are they, are they fun? Like, do they have good jokes? Is it nice to talk about our day? Are we going to have a good time? <laughs> Or are we going to be kind of depressed when we cuddle? And I thought that, that, that you know, I thought that pretty much overall people would be pretty fun 
in the in 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 the bed cuddling. So uh, the, almost nobody did bad on that one. Squishiness. I was a little bit. Uh, it, this was kind of a controversial one because I wanted to make sure that people knew that just because you're fat does not mean you're squishy. Uh, the squishiness is more like, do I get a warm feeling when I think about actually like you know cuddling that individual and and I think that. Uh, you don't have to be fat to rate high on the squishiness, but I will say that is something you emanate rather than something. Yeah, exactly. You. <laughs> yeah, but I will say that if you look like you're all elbows or you would be very awkward to cuddle, you kind of scored low on that one. Voice, <laughs> I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Voice is, um, you know, how how well I think how how nice I think your voice is. Uh, if you've got kind of a little bit of a nasally voice, uh, if if I think your laugh is maybe a little bit over the top, bassoon buffoon, you might not rate quite as high as other. I people. do notice that's my lowest rank here. It is, yes. I do. I do think. Well, now, I actually had to argue with Samantha on that one because she was like, "No way, I love BB's voice," and I was like, "That's just because you love him. His voice is not that attractive." I mean, come on now. No, I understand that. Actually, my wife can. Uh, uh, what's the word? Can corroborate. Corroborate. That uh, cutt cuddling with me is dangerous because if you make me laugh, I will hurt your little ears. Yeah, exactly. Especially if I'm the big spoon. Yeah. And then the dad brush, and that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. I think that is basically how well you're rocking a dad beard. And I think that uh, if you got like the good facial hair, that's a good that's a good call. Uh, if you've got no facial hair, we still gave you a point because you know clean shaven. If you're basically if you're clean shaven, you get you get uh, a good uh, a good bit on the dad brush as well. But really. Uh, we had to have something in there about the beards. That was definitely something that had to be a thing. And then uh, we couldn't really figure out exactly. I, spoonability was the original um, like score here, but we decided uh -huh. to we decided to separate them into little spoon and big spoon. And I can go over the individual rankings on that. But basically, how good would you be as little spoon, and how good would you be as the big spoon? And then the total rankings are basically reflected on how you did overall. Okay, so and you have you have rated one to ten. No one has yes. any zeros here. One to um, ten yeah. in each category, and then and then the total is just the cumulative. So best well, possible well, score there for is one ability. zero. Technically, technically speaking, there is one zero on this. We will talk about that. I have okay. thought about a lot about that zero. Um, but uh, so the best possible score out of sixty, you can or it, the best possible score you can get is sixty. Yes. And <laughs> so here we are, not to toot my own horn, at number one at a whopping 52 points. I like that I have room for improvement, it is Bassoon Buffoon. Yep, yep. Uh, so basically, uh, figured you'd be a really fun dude. Uh, squishiness on point, definitely uh, <laughs> think that you'd be a great cuddle. Uh, the voice is definitely your weakest point, because I could just imagine cuddling you, saying something funny, and then losing my ears for sure. That, uh, that, ha that happens. Uh, you have a decent beard. Uh, I think that it's very much a dad beard because you kind of have some problems growing the hair in some places. It's, but it definitely, you know, it's it's definitely good enough. I think you've done a lot of work on your beard for sure. <laughs> it's one of those things where you had to give you some good points. Little spoon. I think you'd be a fine little spoon, but not the best little spoon. Like I think you'd be okay, but uh, you might not be the most comfortable being the little spoon. I, I think that really it was like. Do, do I think that BB would like being jetpacked? Maybe, yeah, but I'm not positive <laughs> on that. That's, I big, think where I really shine is Big Spoon. Though. Yeah, Big Spoon. Oh man, you, you. I was thinking he's so comforting. He's, you know, definitely, definitely top of the Big Spoon uh, <laughs> pile. Really, really an awesome, an awesome Big Spoon. For and okay, okay. So, so I wasn't fishing for compliments, but I like what I caught. Oh, so. <laughs> I've got compliments for everybody. Like, <laughs> All right, oh, wow. let's Major Laser coming in at a, yeah. a respectable forty-seven points. Yeah, if you haven't seen Major Laser stream, he's a really chill streamer. Late night, does a lot of drafts. Uh, basically, he embodies what Man and Mouse uh, used to do, where he has a, just like a great voice, great personality. Uh, he's a little bit down on himself as far as like play skill goes. Sometimes he's not very confident in the cards that he picks. Uh, but he's just very, very chill streamer. He's actually quite fun. Uh, his humor is a little dr on the dry side, but even, but you know, it's not as dry as Kep, I would say, but it's very close. Um, his squishiness, I think that Major Laser would be definitely a comfortable cuddle, maybe not top tier, but definitely up there. Uh, where I think seven is definitely a very good uh, cuddle mm -hmm. rating, a squishiness rating for that. Um, 
voice i think major laser has an excellent voice he actually has a bad uh, well not a bad but he has a kind of a cheap mic but his mm-hmm. voice is wonderful and i think that if he ha- could invest in his audio uh that he would definitely be a 10 on voice he's he's my favorite voice person well, being able to overcome a bad uh bad tech and still have that voice rating is is just a yeah. glowing review uh dad brush he kind of has a, a a mix of sometimes having like a douche goatee and also a uh like a, a beard it's kind of weird like he'll grow out the, the the size a little bit sometimes but he always has that goatee and i'm like dads don't really do that very much so he didn't score super high on that um i do i'm going to skip the big spoon because i think that major laser would be a really fun big spoon uh that's kind of why he's got a high ranking there but okay. uh, but I, I, I skipped the little spoon because I think he's probably one of the best little spoons. I think I, we'll talk about the best little spoon later, but <laughs> uh, he would definitely be a really nice little spoon. I could definitely just see him in my arms and it would be extremely comfortable. So I think that he would be uh, a great little spoon. Um, my favorite part about this is this whole situation we're doing here is for the potential for fan fiction slash fan art. So yeah, yeah. If you want to, if you want to ship any of these people, feel free. It's going to be <laughs> awesome, especially with me. I would love to see. That. Oh wow. So. Uh, okay, moving on. Number three, Jonah Vale if pulling up a tight bronze medal, almost tying with Major Lager, forty six points. Zoom through these for me, Grim Van. Okay, yes. sorry. Uh, I'll do it fast. So Jonah Vale is pretty fun. He rates a seven. I think that's fine. That's not too bad. Uh, squishiness. I think Jonah Vale is uh, would definitely be a comfortable cuddle, and I could and I could see myself being pretty. Basically, I feel like Jonah would accept me for me, and uh, that's that's one of the things that I like about Jonah Vale. I like uh, okay voice, squishiness. I, this encapsulates the fact that you don't have to be fat to be squishy and cuddly because yeah. he, he's like kind of a fit guy. No, he's not. He's not really that fit, but he is. Oh, is he not? I think he, no, he's kind of a bigger dude. He does wear tank tops, which kind of makes him look a little fit, but he's not that fit. But that's fine. But, <laughs> oh, like it doesn't. Oh. But I do. But I do think. Well, he's even admitted that he needs to start working out some more. But I. But like, really, it's like how how comfortable would I be cuddling him? And I, I think it'd actually be pretty comfortable. Uh, his voice is is very pleasant. And if you've ever watched Jonah Vale, he's got a nice voice. He's got a decent audio setup for it. He's got like a. Uh, a, a, a Yeti uh, mic, and, and he does some pretty good stuff to make it sound good. He's got a, a hell of a beard going on. It's uh, not too patchy. It's definitely pretty good. I don't know if I'd call it a dad beard or maybe uh, getting close to being a hipster beard almost, but it's it's dad enough that I think it works. Um, I think Jonah would play the role. I think Jonah is very good at playing roles, uh, mm-hmm. for sure, and he would be an amazing little spoon. Like, he... He would get into it. There would be like some butt stuff going on, and you'd be like, "Oh, Jonah," you know. And it would you just know, like, like you sticks, you like stick it out, and you like yeah. nuzzle in a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh man, yeah. So he would really get into being the little spoon. So he is our top little spoon champion for sure. But do I With really trust? Yeah, but do I really trust him to be the big spoon? I don't know. That's 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 where he kind of uh, falls off. There is. It's like one of those things where I don't know if I'd be comfortable having Jonah be the big spoon. I feel like he might get a little handsy. I don't know. I would just be a little bit scary. That's all. <laughs> he he can't soothe you. If the, the point of the big spoon is to soothe the little spoon. Yeah, exactly. To yeah. the point of comfort and sleepability. And I don't trust yeah. Jonah Vale as my big spoon to really put yeah. me into that sleepy space. But he is a great streamer and a great content creator. And that's also a secondary point as why I made this list is I think that all these people are great streamers. Uh, as well there are many other people that are wonderful streamers but this is also an effort to expose some of the uh people that might not be as well known because um i do a lot of research and i watch a lot of (laughs) eternal streams and uh this is one of the this is kind of my my thing like if you're wondering how i came up with this it's because i've watched all these people for many hours so chat is saying (laughs) chat is saying this is the single best piece of eternal content ever made so just just excellent let you know griffin they they, they're enjoying this so there you go listen from from the void knows knows how to get it done we know how to get the the good people on the show with the great ideas yeah Uh, all right number four this pulls up a very tight a very tight group of people, uh, uh, very closely. One to four is just like such a close race. Enrosh one uh, yeah. pulls up. So number if you four. haven't seen, if you haven't seen Enrosh uh, stream, he's actually a really interesting dude. Uh, he is 
Uh, he reminds me of the guy at the Magic, uh, at like a Magic the Gathering store that is always playing like the memeiest deck. Oh, he wants to be competitive. He's like right on out on the outside edge. He might be the Magic the Gathering judge, where you know he's like he's like he he wants to be a competitive player, but he knows and he knows all the rules. But he just doesn't want to be an asshole. So he's just like, you know what? I'm not going to be an asshole. I'm just going to be the the level two judge of the region. And I am going to be a really good player and a really fun guy. And I'm not going to be all uh, bent out of shape of, about competition. Like that's that when I see Inrosh streaming, uh, that's what I see. And he makes some very questionable draft choices. And he's <laughs> one of the few, well, he's one of the few people that I can actually learn from when I watch than play eternal because he's doing things that i would never do and yeah. i think that you can learn a lot from people like that uh because if i just sat there and watched bruised by god play all day i feel like i would just be watching good plays constantly and i don't know if i'd ever learn that much from that at this point in my eternal career but if sense. i w but but watching people do things that are risky and taking chances uh is is kind of uh, uh good for me right now but he is uh, he has some pretty good scores. Uh, I don't think he's quite as fun as some of the other people on this list, so he only scored in as a six. I think he is a fun guy. He definitely gets excited when he wins, which is nice. Um, I think that he would be an amazing cuddle, so his 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 squishiness is quite high because uh, he definitely would appreciate the cuddle a lot. Uh, he's one of those people that if you gave him a compliment when you were like, oh, you look nice today, he would just be like, you could blush and you could see him just kind of like shiver a little bit because you know <laughs> that that compliment would mean the world to him. And I think that 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 makes him rate high in the squishiness factor for me. Uh, his his audio setup is good, so his voice is uh, is rated pretty high there. I, I like his voice. Um, okay. The uh, His dad brush, he has an epic beard. It's almost, it's almost lumber... Uh, it's almost lumberjack beard. It's like really out there. Uh, I think it could maybe be tamed back a little bit, but definitely looks like somebody who could be somebody's dad, which is why he wins the best beard of the show competition as well. Um, I think that he would, he's a switch spooner. I think he'd be fine as a, <laughs> as a little spoon or a big spoon. Wow. Wow. Uh, it's a hitter. The soon buffoon. Yeah. Yeah. He would be. He would be a great little spoon or big spoon. Uh, either way you looked at it, I'm making the show run way too long. I apologize. Uh, this is I, more I important than literally anything else we could do today. Okay. This, okay. this is so important. It, this is knowledge being passed down to future eternal generation yeah. players. Okay. Like, I put a lot of thought into this list. You guys might just think I slapped some numbers down on this bad boy, but I put a lot of thought into this list. So, isn't that weird? Okay. Mm, okay. <laughs> Uh, he, weird is a weird way to pronounce fantastic, but uh, look, going on. Going on. Number yes. five, Sunnyvale. After a, a precipitous drop off from from high to mid forties, we have Sunnyvale, a very a very respectable thirty three, but room for improvement. Yeah. So maybe this time yeah. we can we can point out where Sunnyvale can maybe improve his cuddle game. Yeah, the problem is that Sunnyvale is probably the most average cuddler on the list. You might think that he's uh, at really low ranked, but actually what happened was he came in as uh, very average in the rankings on pretty much every scale. And it's not because I think that, that Sunnyvale is average as a person, but just as a, as somebody to cuddle, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it would be that exciting. A solid C. You, there's nothing, there's yeah. no shame in it. Yeah, exactly. And and I think that uh, if you watch Sunnyvale, you know he creates great content. He recently got partner, uh, and so you should definitely check out his stream. But I think that when you go to his stream, you might also expect to see kind of an average performance sometimes. Now, he's an excellent player, uh, and he does some really excellent things, but you might be a little bit uh, be like, man, this, this is not the most exciting stream that I've ever sat down and watched. But I think he does produce great content. He he got partnered before me. What a jerk. And uh, <laughs> but if we go Did that through, affect think, your ratings at all? Do you think bitterness maybe would have factored into these? Or did you try and did, were you as can you promise me that you were as objective as you should have been? You, in these you very important rankings. I brought somebody else into this as well. So I think that I Ooh. that that we yeah, so my girlfriend sat down and helped me with all of these ratings, and so I think that I was as impartial as I could, and she agreed that Sunnyvale is maybe the most average cuddler on Twitch. So, <laughs> I Sunnyvale, would say, you gotta, you gotta was, up your game. Yeah. 
Yep. So he he scores a six in the fun. Pretty fun. Not definitely not as fun as some of the other people on the list. But uh, but you know he he really just gets down to business. But he also kind of brings some fun to it. Squishiness once again. I think he'd be okay for cuddling, but I don't think he'd really enjoy it as much as I would be. And it'd be kind of sad. Uh, I think that his voice is pretty good. Um, I. There's some things that are going on with his audio that that uh, I would have to hear his real voice to to rate him higher. Um, I think that maybe some of the uh, it's just one of those things when you're placed a little too far from your mic, you kind of lose some of yeah. the, some of the voice. And I think he has that going on a little bit. Dad brush, he's clean shaven. Uh, he's probably the cleanest shaven individual in the uh, in the actual rankings, which basically put him at a five because we did decide that if you tried to shave most of the time we would give you a five just because that sounds seems like a dad thing to do little spoon big spoon i don't know if it would actually matter too much i did think that uh sunny would be a little bit of a better big spoon than a little spoon i but i think that uh that's just because i wouldn't have to like see his disappointment in the cuddle so that was just one of those things where you know if you're the big spoon, you're you're like if you're the little spoon and somebody's big spooning you and you're just like, you know, and you don't see that they're like on their phone and not really getting into the cuddle, like, you know, mm -hmm. you're little you're the little spoon, so you're faced away and you're just like, Oh, this is nice, but so I think you'd be a slightly better big spoon, honestly. Okay, so my only point of contention on this is yeah. Sunnyvale Sunnyvale, I think, um, I think deserves maybe a higher squishiness rating he, i get the impression Possibly, from sunnyvale yeah. that if you earn that squish from him if you earn that love from him he will give it unrepentantly and 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 in large quantities but okay. you've gotta you've gotta deserve it you know yeah yeah i could see that yeah that's a good point I think that if he, uh, it, you're right. If if you, because you know, I'm I'm thinking of more like I'm in the friend zone, right? I'm in Sunny <laughs> with Sunnyvale. I'm in the friend zone, and I just yeah. think, I think of it as a friendly cuddle. I feel like I'm at arm's length with Sunnyvale. But you're right. If you earn that love, I bet you, I bet you that squishiness rating would go up to like an eight. <laughs> All right, and so we have a tie for sixth place here. End Keeper and Yadabite both. Uh, have 31 points, almost as average as average can be. Um, so do you want to go through and uh, talk about each one individually, or do you want to talk about fun and then talk about both of them? Does I'll, that talk, I'll talk about, I'll talk about uh, each one individually real quick. I'll okay. try to keep it short, but Innkeeper is... In a, I'm going to start with Innkeeper, but he's an amazing streamer. Um, mm -hmm. Really funny. The only thing that I have problems uh, with Innkeeper is he kind of makes me feel like my choice of career in life is possibly the wrong one constantly because he always talks about how he uh is a, a famous twitch streamer and kind of degrades it and it makes me sad that's my only problem <laughs> watching innkeeper is that he doesn't he doesn't really take his gameplay very seriously but i actually think he's a very talented player uh believe it or not i think he do usually does the right play and he uh, he immediately notices his mistakes so mm -hmm. watching him is pretty uh you know it's it's good because it's one of those things where you're not yelling at the screen because somebody Decided to do 16 damage in one turn instead of actually winning the game. I won that game. Mm -hmm. You did not win that game. You <laughs> lost that game. You won that game because you did 16 in the air, but I'm pretty sure you lost that game. Oh, is that not the one I won? No, that's not the oh, one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's move so on. Anyway. Let's, let's, let's keep going yeah, on. Sorry. Here. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, Innkeeper is a very funny guy, so he definitely rates high in the fun. Uh, it's all very sarcastic and dry, but he's definitely a funny dude. Uh, on the squishiness, I'm afraid that uh, Innkeeper doesn't seem like somebody that would be uh, all that into the cuddle as far as like uh, cuddling goes. I think he would get distracted by other things really often. Um, and He seems very pointy and angular. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely all elbows. So it's one of those things where I was uh, I had to rate him pretty low on the squishiness. Voice, I think that maybe I should have rated him a little higher. I think Innkeeper has an incredible range as far as his voice goes. And uh, he's really good and very committed to the bit. I think I could have rated him a couple points higher, but I went on and did a 7. Because I think that while it's good, it's one of those things where I don't think he's very confident in his voice. And sometimes uh, it ends up failing. Dad brush? Uh, well, I mean, he, he tends to like let it go and not be shaved for a few days. And then he shaves. And I think that's because he has a similar view to, as me, where... He, like he sees that like two day beard and he's like that adds a little bit of definition to my my face when really it just kind of looks like shit so that's one of those things where i had to i had to uh rate him as a one uh little spoon i think that kept would be a pretty uh would be a pretty good little spoon uh that is just i think that's where he would uh have his role and it would definitely shine 
And uh, as far as Big Spoon goes, I uh, did not think Kep would be a very good Big Spoon. It's one of those things where uh, I think it would just be constant jokes, and it just would not would not really be compatible. You've got to take you've got to take the Big Spoon role seriously. And yeah, would, yeah, yeah. And, and I think a lot of people either scored high on the Big Spoon or high on the Little Spoon. It's one of those things where I, I could definitely envision them in one role and maybe not the other. There were a few Switch Spooners, but not very many. So. <laughs> <laughs> the next uh, individual on the list is Yadabai, and Yadabai here is a uh, obviously an, an Australian uh, streamer, well, a streamer from Australia, and he streams Eternal, and he's really talented, a uh, really great guy. I talked about him in the top 100 yesterday, that I think the only thing holding him back uh, from being a, an extremely competitive player is his stream, uh, which is kind of sucky because I know that as a competitive player that streams, one of the problems is that you want to stream all of your content, which includes your tournament runs, but then that uh, is distracting. It puts you out there for people to watch, which is bad when you're when you're doing competitive tournaments, because especially in this new one where no, where we don't have public deck lists, it mm -hmm. means that once they see you in round one, they know exactly what you're playing. They can prepare for your deck. They can mulligan against you. It's very mm -hmm. rough. And I think that if Yada gets to a point where he is going to be successful, he's going to have to do it off stream and then do what I do, which is record his matches and then uh, and then like go over them on the stream with his uh, fans. But I think that he's an amazing, talented streamer. Uh, he's in kind of a weird uh, time bracket. I think that if anybody watches the Eternal streams, they already know who Yada is, uh, especially in that time bracket. So Yada is a pretty fun guy. Not uh, not extremely fun, but he's definitely better than average. Um, his squishiness, I you know, if he was always in the hoodie, I think I'd rate the squishiness a little bit higher because he definitely would be uh, would be uh, a little bit you know warmer. The hoodie is a major buff. Yeah, yeah, the hoodie is a big deal, but I couldn't envision him always being in the hoodie. Now I guess if I if, if I thought of him as sleeping in the hoodie, maybe. Uh, as far <laughs> as voice goes, as far as voice goes, he's a. Uh, He's got a wonderful accent, especially for us Americans that aren't used to it, which is uh, nice. And he's got a pretty deep voice, which is uh, pretty nice. I think his audio is actually uh, not as good as it could be, which is kind of weird. It, it sounds a little cheaper than I thought it was at first after going back through the VODs and sort of going over it. So I didn't rate him a 10, but he's definitely up there as far as voice goes. Uh, Dad Rush, once again, he's not fully committed to the beard. And uh, I think that every once in a while he shaves it all off, and that means he just hasn't really gone very far with that I, I will say that when he was streaming from uh pax australia he definitely looked extremely sharp definitely not like anybody's dad he almost looked like a model it was pretty ridiculous and uh, <laughs> it was because of the it's because of the angle they had him on i was like holy shit yada looks hot so uh anyway definitely not really dadly uh little spoon i think yada would be a perfect little spoon um and that is uh that is mostly because i think of him as a small individual, and I think I could just engulf a Yada bite, and it would be uh, a wonderful experience. And as far as a big spoon goes, I think that uh, he wouldn't really make the make the best jetpack. And sometimes when he's a little down on a situation, he gets pretty negative, uh, and that actually sounds pretty bad in an, in, an, in in an Australian accent. So having that whispered into my ear was was kind of like one of those things where I was like, mm, I don't think he'd be that great of a big spoon. That's fair. That's yeah, Loco. Uh, so we, uh, I was going to try to hurry, but if yeah, you yeah, want go to. through, go through, go through. Loco Pojo, go ahead. So Loco is the next on the list. Uh, Loco is an interesting streamer. He does mostly uh, meme decks, and but the problem is that uh, oftentimes when I'm watching his streams, I feel like he ignores the viewers a lot, and he doesn't really get into the whole uh, communicating with his people very much. And Maybe a selfish cuddler. Yeah, he's a bit of a selfish cuddler. I feel like a lot of his content goes to YouTube, and he really has split himself. He really could thinks of himself as a YouTube uh, content creator rather than a Twitch content creator, even though he was one of the first, uh, I think he was one of the first Twitch partners that, that got partner off of Eternal. Uh, he had a really big following from a game called Evolve, and oh, okay. uh, that, that gave him a bunch of followers when he first came into Eternal. But I think he was, like I said, I think that Eternal is where he really took off, and that's, uh, that's where he got partner. I think he's a talented streamer and a funny dude. Uh, but as far as cuddle rankings go, unfortunately, he's next to last. Um, I would say that Loco Pojo is, can be fun. Uh, his dedication to the meme is kind of why he got as many points as he did. But he also seems to take his memes extremely seriously, way more seriously than any man should. So I kind of <laughs> had to uh, had to low, rate him a little lower. Mm -hmm. Squishiness, pretty average. Uh, I think that he'd be fairly squishy. 
Uh, I think that if you, I've seen him blush multiple times on camera, and that's really where the squishiness goes up because I think that he, uh, that he's an adorable blusher, and I think it might be easy to make him blush. So I think that that would be, um, he basically blushes when he gets excited, and I think that 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 really heightens his squishiness factor. His voice, unfortunately, he rated kind of low on the voice. It's mostly because I find it annoying, but that is not really that fair. Uh, but it's just one of those things where he has this uh, this tone to his voice that usually sounds like he's talking down to somebody, and that is just something I can't really uh, get into. And if, if I had that uh, going on with a cuddle, I would be uh, I would be pretty much out of there, unfortunately. Dad brush, once again, he's uh, he is not really clean shaven, but he also does shave every once in a while, so it's a it's it's hard to catch him with a uh, legit dad uh, face, and so. Uh, I think we definitely eternal's him pretty... most baby face streamer. Yeah, sure. definitely. Yeah, definitely. He does not look like anybody's dad yet, but maybe someday. Maybe someday. <laughs> He'll get there. He was a fine spooner on both uh, both levels. I thought that he would be a trustworthy big spoon and definitely could uh, could hold you through your day if you had a bad day. And I thought that he'd be a good little spoon too, because you know he'd he'd be up for being a little spoon. I think he's he's once again a pretty uh, good example of a switch spooner. Here's and here's then, my uh, thoughts on Loco Pojo before we move on to Manu. I I think I think he is a little emotionally aloof. You can tell he doesn't make himself really emotionally available or vulnerable yes. on his streams. And I think I think that emotional connection is a big important part of the cuddles. So yeah. I think no matter how technically good <laughs> of a cuddler he can be, there's there's a ceiling, there's a glass ceiling yep. that'll never break because he won't connect with you. Yep. And then we have uh, finally a very con a very very talented content creator named Manu S. He's a teammate of mine. Uh, he can basically take any deck and make it, uh, you know, from 65% good to about 70% good, which is, you know, in the overall scheme of things, uh, a 5% increase on a deck's win rate is actually pretty insane, believe it or not. And I think that a lot of people don't appreciate that 5%. Um, as far as cuddling goes, though, Unfortunately, yeah, we, Manu we S can't be good at everything. Yeah, we definitely cannot be. Very talented, eternal player, but uh, he is all business. Definitely the lowest <laughs> on the uh, the fun ranking. Um, I know that sometimes Manu S does have fun on his streams, but for the most part, he is all business. If you come to him uh, with a problem, he's going to basically say, "Take it somewhere else, buddy," because uh, or they don't call it the danger zone for nothing. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely <laughs> the danger zone. Uh, squishiness. I once again, I you know maybe it's the maybe it's the fact that he's German. I I don't want to you know offend anybody, but he said it himself that at, because of his upbringing, he doesn't like small talk. I think that it would be a silent cuddle. It would be a stone cu cuddle. It would be probably the unsquishiest cuddle. I I did give him a couple more points because I felt really bad about how low his overall ranking was. Uh, but if I had to, he probably would. Be a little bit less now i was gonna say four is maybe a little too generous yeah, but. it is yeah yeah uh his voice though is actually pretty nice uh the only thing is it would be kind of like cuddling darth vader sometimes and that would be a little <laughs> scary uh i think he's got maybe the lowest voice of anybody uh, that streams eternal uh if you've ever if you've paid attention to him i think it's pleasing uh there are some people who don't like the german accent uh but overall i think that his voice is, is pretty nice uh his dad brush no unfortunately it's pretty clean shaven but at the same time it's just one of those things where he just does doesn't really want to rock anything that even looks like a dad most likely we'll skip the little spoon for a second i think that uh he would probably be an okay big spoon but i really don't think he'd be into the cuddle to be honest with you like he just kind of drapes his arm over you and then just yeah. lays there flaccidly yeah. and like i said there wouldn't be any small talk and i, and I really think that if you're the big spoon like small talk is kind of a big part of your uh, is, is mm -hmm. kind of a big part of your thing, so he did, definitely does not score on the little spoon, and the reason for that is because if you've ever seen Manu S, you know that he is nobody's little spoon. That guy will never be your little spoon. He is dominant. He is on top. He is the <laughs> alpha spoon. So and here is really... even beyond that. Even beyond that, if you've seen Manu S physically, his hair takes many different forms but the the one constant is it is always pointy yes so if true. manu s were to be a little spoon you would have to deal with hair gel you would have to deal with mohawk spikes going in your eyeball all the time just like totally unqualified to be a little spoon in every yeah. aspect oh, wow. and there you go those are the those are the ranking <laughs> the guys enjoyed that Grandpa, that, that was, that was 
just brilliant just brilliant um wow just like we have people on chat just commenting like this is this is like one of the best things they have ever they have ever heard <laughs> so like it's great so thank you for doing this comprehensive research on this really appreciate it do you fun. agree do you disagree let us know in the comments for sure for sure content I, Grim fan, please, uh, please tweet this out so I can retweet it. So and uh, from the void, we'll retweet it, and so we can like, uh, we'll just like have people like maybe start a thread with this and just kind of like, all right, oh yeah, we, yeah, it'd be it. great. So it'd be a great, great uh, talk on the the internet. All right, let's move on here for the next thing that we want to talk about. We have our deck of the week, and this right here is a very interesting deck. Um, it is a cool deck. It is a fun deck. I have not played it yet, but I'm very interested because I'm going to play it today because it looks, it looks fun. It looks fun. But, um, so take it away. We have this deck right here. It is, go ahead, Basoon, our Grim fan. Uh, this Please. is a deck of my own creation called Yeti Maulers. Not Stone Scar Mauler, no weapons in the deck. It is a Yeti spell burn deck with Maul finisher. Um, it is basically your standard Yeti Zoo with Maul. I made it as a joke on my stream, won about half my games, continued tweaking it, and uh, I think this deck is legitimately not a joke. It looks fun. Yeah. So. It, it looks pretty good. So, well, run this down. Is there anything that we need to know about this? Like, any type of synergies that, or do you just kind of go face and burn people out? Go for it. <laughs> Um, so, uh, real quick, right before I let Grimfan... Grimfan was actually playing this at a the highest level of Eternal Ladder yesterday. Um, but, uh, real quick, before we let Grimfan go, um, just sing the praises of my excellent deck building. Um, it, uh, I think it is a little more consistent than a traditional Skycrag burn deck because of the card selection that Crunch gives you from his Infiltrate and Slope Sergeant gives you from his Bond ability. Um, just being able to cycle through the extra power we have in the deck and cycle to our burn spells and to whatever removal we need. Genev Merchant, mirror imaging a Genev Merchant is incredible in a ton of matchups. Um, and I think I think the deck's power is card selection for specific situations you find yourself in. Grimfan, mm -hmm. can you cor corroborate? Yeah, I love an aggro deck that rewards good play, and I think that this is definitely one of those. If you're a good player, I think that you'll find this aggro deck really satisfying, because oftentimes what will happen is you'll find yourself in a position where you've done 12 damage to your enemy, and, and you finish them off with perfect math on like a, a couple of obliterates over a couple of turns or a maul that ended up uh, being really well. And the other thing that that is interesting about it is uh, Yetis is not something that traditionally, pl traditionally plays a card like maul, and so... Uh, while the deck is relatively unknown right now, you might be able to surprise your opponent with Maul because the biggest problem with Maul is that once your opponent realizes the game, they just empty their entire hand and never try to draw an extra card. And against the Eddies, you really can't do that. You, like, you can do that, uh, but that's not really what you would normally be doing. You'd be wanting to like three for one them with harsh rule, that kind of thing. And then all of a sudden you lose to Maul. So it's one of those things where I really liked the deck. I was very impressed uh, by when I was playing it, and I was actually trying to lose when I decided to pick it up <laughs> at the time when I was at rank 5, and I ended up going back up to rank 3. It actually had a much better win rate than the uh, Zuberi control list I was playing. So I, I really like the backlash in it. That's just kind of a surprising factor right there because just people the are backlash not... is incredibly strong right now. Yeah, it's actually very good, yeah. The the backlash and the mall. Mall, mall is such... Like, against control decks is such a good card. I think the highest I've done with Maul, not with this deck, I was playing a different Maul deck, was 18 points and of damage. And that was just like a one-hit kill, and I was just, it was awesome. But um, well, what is, like, the opening hand do you want? Do you just want, like, your basically aggro plan, like Champions of Fury, Crunch Warders, kind of just, like, Permafrost type of thing, just to kind of hold the board and then go face? What, what, what you, is your... you typically are hard mulliganing, hard mulliganing for merchants or champion of fury. Okay. Yeah, okay. champion of fury is definitely one of the best cards in the game right now. I would definitely put it. I would put it in the top four. Like it is so backbreaking getting hit by champion of fury on turn two if you don't have any way to counter it, and the only real way to counter it is blocking it or torch or ranger's choice. And you know you can only play so many cards like that. And an unanswered Champion of Fury does so much damage so quickly. And then the other thing about this deck is that Champion of Fury gets even better because all of a sudden, instead of being a 4-2, it could be a 5-3, it could be a 6-4, and you're looking at 
champion of furies that are suddenly just unanswerable and and you can then use like if champion fury suddenly can't attack for a turn well maybe we can just use a slope sergeant to draw a couple cards pitch a couple mm -hmm. power and all of a sudden now you've got a four four on the board that's definitely going to be able to attack i think the deck is really really solid so so, so definitely um, something that can take you to masters probably right you think yeah, so? Yeah, it could. Yeah. It actually could take yeah. it. Message, I, yeah. I I literally did it yesterday. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's I, right. I, <laughs> I played a yeah, Yeti deck to Masters recently, maybe two seasons ago before Into the Shadow came out, and oh. it was very strong, and I think that this is actually stronger than that deck. Awesome. <clears throat> awesome. This, this deck looks fun, so definitely try it out. We will put this in our Discord. Um, that's right. We have a Discord. We'll talk about that in a second. But we'll put this in our <laughs> Discord, and... Uh, so you can try it out and everything. If you're if you're listening to this, uh, like I said, uh, we'll, we'll I'll try I'll tweet this out today so you can check it out. Check out Bassoon's deck right here. Grim fan approves of it as well, and so do I. I haven't yeah, even played it yet. This is the least greedy SPG deck I've ever seen. <laughs> that, that, that's uh, that's really good. Awesome. I was chastised. I was chastising my teammates yesterday, pointing to your stream and saying, "Look." I've been talking to you guys for a week about how sick I think this deck is. I think the deck's real. It has legs. And Missing Toe's response was, yeah, but we'd never seen a good player play it before. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I did say it really does reward good play. If you play badly with this deck, you will lose a lot, I think. It is very, like, you really have to count to 25 with this deck and take into account every single point of lifesteal your opponent can possibly have. And that includes Rizons, that includes Highwaymen, if you are not accounting for these things, you will definitely lose the game because there's a ton of lifesteal right now. So it's not the best yeah. position against lifesteal, but I will say that it is great against cookbook decks if they don't realize what you're doing because that mall yeah. will just eat them alive. So. For sure, for sure. Well, let's get into our last bit of the show. Grim fan, uh, thank you for joining us today. Can you tell us about any projects that are going on, um, where they can find you on stream, where they can find you on Twitter, Etc. Go ahead. Take it away. Yeah, basically, if you Google Grim Fan, you can find me in a bunch of different places. Uh, my Twitter is at Grim Fan. My Twitch is Grim Fan. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Grim Fan. Basically, I have a very distinctive name. I think there's been one individual that I've ran into that was on a uh, forum dedicated to Asian gamers that somehow had gra grabbed the name Grim Fan. I have no idea why. Uh, I would love to pick that person's brain, but, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, anyway, as far as my projects go, I think that the uh, Cuddly Eternal Dad rankings project was pretty big. I spent a lot of time on that last night, and uh, that was that really took a lot out of me. No, actually, I've got a pretty cool uh, video series I want to do that's about being able to read what's in your opponent's hand. Um, it's uh, I I always come up with titles and it always gets changed, but uh, the basically it has something to do with the cost of time so the amount of time that you take in a turn versus mm. the way that you normally play the game uh can obviously give away very uh very important information to your opponent the team league was definitely one of those places where that came up more often because you have a bunch of people discussing potential lines mm -hmm. and when you've got uh people taking five minutes to, to discuss three lines then that means that you can pretty much see what every single line is as long as you are thinking about their thought process as well. Uh, I think that's a pretty important thing. Uh, not, the, not the most important. I'd probably rank it slightly above uh, bluffing, definitely way below uh, something like playing better. I mean, playing, playing perfectly is definitely a good skill, but being able to get into the mind of your opponent is a good thing. Uh, so that's something that's coming up in the future projects. Uh, that's right. That's I think that's a really good project for you to do. I, I've oh, noticed I you are particularly good at that. Yes, I can pretty much tell what's in my opponent's hand, uh, at least half the cards in their hand in, in any given game, depending on if I know their deck, etc. Just because of the fact that oftentimes somebody will have a pivotal turn and they'll be thinking about what they need to do and they might be setting up a turn later and usually I can make some sort of play to counter that setup because I'm realizing what they're trying to set up. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, yeah, so that's that's uh, what I've got down the pipeline. Um, it'll probably be, I'm, I need to kind of expand my YouTube. I'm I'm actually GrimFan32 on there, maybe, maybe GrimFan. I'm not sure. My YouTube is a mess, so, uh, <laughs> but I will be having videos on there about it, and uh, they will also be on EternalTitans.com, which I think is a, a really good website that's ran by Level 13 David, who is uh, our web designer slash uh, web admin. And he's a really, uh, really amazing graphic designer. 
For sure. Brad. Any 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 shout outs? Just real quick. Off the top of your head. Uh, any shout outs you want to give to anyone? Lord of Slam. Lord of Slam, my number one fan. Thank you very much for believing in me. I never thought that I would have a fan in uh, ever. And I know, definitely know that a lot of people like watching me. But Lord of Slam is literally the the only f actual fan i know of like like that guy could be the leader of my fan club if there were enough people to put into a club and uh so thank you so much for supporting me thanks to all my viewers for supporting me me making partner made it so that i could be my own boss on twitch and i think that's really kind of uh brought out some weird shit with me but that's okay because you know you, you never knew what you were going to get into once you actually gave me that little check mark did you twitch anyway <laughs> thank you for making me a partner i appreciate that and uh, thanks to you guys for inviting me onto the podcast. It's really, uh, really awesome. Oh, also, thanks to my team. Uh, I, you might think that you're not important to me because I did talk about leaving you for Suno, but I mean, come on, come on. Suno is a beautiful person. Like, if you, like, if you, if you're actually going to judge me on that, you really just need to go have a conversation with Suno. I mean, he I, is just wonderful. Every team, every member of every team should have. You know how sometimes uh, when you're talking with your significant other, you get like a hall pass. Like if Demi Moore shows up, I get a hall pass, right? And you're, mm -hmm. you're. You, I think every team should give every member of their team a Sono hall pass. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Basu, what about you? Your Twitter, Twitch shoutouts. Go ahead. Uh, all right, you can follow me at Human Venipede on Twitter. Uh, it's the funniest tag on the website. No one will ever convince me otherwise. Um, please join me in my holy crusade to get my beautiful dog, Scout, in the game, Eternal. I want her made into... Wait, where is she? There she is. I want her made... Oh <laughs> Scout. She's asleep. She is in such a wonderful <laughs> She's asleep. She's right now. Uh, yeah. oh, so squishy, I want my dog in the game. Off the charts right there. <laughs> <laughs> Put my face in her and just be like, oh yeah, cuddle me. She's straight 60 on the oh, yeah. rankings for yes. sure awesome. um you can follow my twitch at uh twitch.tv slash bassoon buffoon i am bassoon buffoon on literally every other platform except twitter <laughs> um, nice job, yes man. you gotta throw a curveball you gotta make sure people are paying attention right you know that's, that's what you gotta do all right uh for me you can find me on twitter at what the deck hs on Twitter, uh, don't have a Twitch right now, but I will maybe one day be doing that once I figure out how to stream properly. And then uh, for shout outs, we have uh, Team Rankstar, so thank you for uh, part of the team. Uh, also, I have another shout out Andrew is living. He was in this, uh, he was in our Twitch chat. He hit Masters for the first time last month, uh, so congratulations go, to him. So that was, that is pretty sweet. He's only been playing for, I believe, only. Two months, so I think his second month he hit master. So, good job, man. Keep it up. I'm glad you're enjoying the game. And then, uh, to for the last bit, a couple of things, we have you can find us at From the Void Cast on Twitter. We have our sister show, uh, Hero Power underscore Cast on Twitter. That's at Hero Power underscore Cast. They had an Eternal player and Hearthstone player on their. Uh, episode last night that's admirable you might have heard of him before that's admirable uh so go check their out they have their vods on this uh on twitch as well on the same channel we have a website from the void podcast.com you can find our link to our twitter to our discord which our discord is awesome so you should come hang out there you know just join hang out you'll get a personalized greeting from me and then but soon we'll probably make fun of you somehow so it is awesome so like this is kind of amazing this, it's, it's, it's good. See, it's a personalized type of, like, Twitter, you know, Discord. So, it is good. Um, so, that's it right there. So, any any before we sign off? Uh, no, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. I love you, Grimfan. Thank you so much yeah, for agreeing to this. Thank you, Grimfan. I may, I may have told you to shut the fuck up the other day, but I, I do love you. Uh, that was um, one of the reasons why I do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Enjoy good. your yeah, yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, so, on behalf of... Yeah, go, 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 go. No, go, go. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. On behalf of my co-host, Navalis, thank you, Grim Fan, for being here. We have been from the Void Podcast. Um, we will see you next week on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. We have a we have an awesome guest lined up next week, so uh, we will kind of save that for a little bit later to reveal. So I'm I'm excited about that. So thank you for all for listening. Thank you for sticking around, even though with my internet hating me and dropping out and just all that stuff. 
uh, you can't, you never know what happens when we're from the void. Later, guys.